Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we will create a stylized pizza artwork. We will do some modeling, sculpting, use grease pencil for 2D strokes, create materials and set up lighting. Let's start with this. With the default cube selected, I will scale up the shape along X and Y axis. Select the front face and make it smaller. Make the back face more wider. This is going to be the base of the pizza. Next, press Shift A and add a cylinder. Move it to the back side. And rotate it 90 degrees. Change the scale and make it bigger. Position the cylinder so it covers the back side. Shift D to make a duplicate copy of the base object. Right click as you move to snap it back. Move it above and make it slightly smaller. This is going to be the cheese part of the pizza. Select the base and the cylinder object. Press Ctrl J to join them into one object. We can rename the objects here. I will hide the top part for a moment. Press Ctrl A and select Transform Scale to reset any scale changes. From the modifier panel, add a remesh modifier. This modifier recreates the entire mesh shape with more resolution and making one seamless object useful for sculpting. Turn on smooth shading. Apply the modifier. Next we will repeat the same process for the top part and add the remesh modifier. Make sure to apply transform scale here as well so our results look correct. Apply the modifier. Switch to sculpt mode. Press G to select the grab move brush. Use a lower strength value. Press Alt Q to make the base object active for sculpting. Turn on the symmetry option as well. Hold shift and click on the edges to smooth the shape. Make the brush size a little bigger and refine the shape of the back side. On the side part, with a smaller brush size, hold Ctrl and brush over to make the side faces go inwards. We just want a smooth type of shape so we do not need to add too much details here. Alt Q to make the top object active for sculpting. I will not use the symmetry option here as I want both sides to look different. Move the lower sides down and refine the shape. Shift smooth alongside as needed. Use the snake hook brush to extend out the shapes even more. You can sculpt any other shapes as you like and don't have to make it exactly like as shown here.
making small adjustments in the overall shape. Let's add some detail on the top part. Shift A and add a cylinder object. Make it smaller and place it on the top. Control A to reset the scale property. Add a remesh modifier. Use the sharp property this time to keep the cylinder shape more round. Apply the modifier. Next, add a bevel modifier and add two segments. Right click and select smooth shade here as well. The reason for this is that it will help in giving a much more cleaner round organic shape. Move it slightly in the cheese layer part. Shift D to make few more duplicate copies and position them over the top. Change the scale a little so that they don't look exactly same. In the sculpt mode, slightly move the inner part down. Again rotate and position so there are no visible intersections showing. Shift A and add a cylinder. Change the vertex count to higher like 72 so it is more round. This object will act as a floor or can be a plate. Make the size bigger and position it under the pizza object. Select the entire pizza objects and using the transform tool, move slightly above so the base is not going too much inside the plate part. One last thing. This step is optional and you can skip it if you want to. Whenever we use the remesh modifier or do sculpting, we will end up with a high dense resolution mesh. Sometimes we don't need that much polygons and would like to optimize our objects. For instance, you can see the base object is quite simple shape but it is still about 15,000 faces. So to fix this, First, make a backup copy of the object so you don't lose your original sculpted object. Go to Data Properties and use the Quad Remesh option. I will set the face count to 2000 faces and apply it. High values maintain more details. You may have to test different settings to see which gives the best overall result. Once Quad Remesh completes, our new object will have a lower amount of faces but still maintain most of the overall shape. There can be a few issues at some points, you can shift smooth in the sculpt mode to remove them. Optimizations are often needed in any project. They can help in faster rendering viewport editing as well. So this is one way to reduce the polygon of sculpted models. Please remember you can always model sculpt in any other ways as you like as there is no one way of creating things. Use whichever method works for you. This completes the modeling part now let's start with the grease pencil tools to add brush strokes on our model. Press shift A and in the grease pencil section add a blank object. This object will be added in the center origin point and does not contains anything. 
it will be listed as G pencil in the outliner. Press Ctrl tab to open a pie menu to access grease pencil tools. Here you can see different modes that are available. They are also accessible from the top down menu in the top left corner. Press Ctrl tab and select the draw option. You can see some tools are available in the side menu. Click the button on the top, it will open a menu. Here we have different types of brushes which we can use. Each has a different stroke effect. We will use the ink pen rough brush. Click on it to make it active. Press F and move the mouse so you can make the size bigger or smaller. Just draw some strokes in the viewport to test the settings. Ctrl Z to undo any strokes drawn. Make sure the strength is set to 1 so the drawing result is opaque. Press F again and make the size small. Zoom in onto the model. In the top menu, click the placement menu. Here select the surface option. Leave the offset value. We will change it in a moment. Draw one stroke on the base. Let's rotate the viewport. You can use the viewport rotation tool for this. The first issue we will see is that our stroke is drawn way above the surface, not on it. So we will go back to the placement menu. Here we will reduce the offset to a very low number. I am using a value of around 0.005. Now draw a stroke again on the base object. This time our stroke draws properly over the surface. Using this setting, start drawing strokes over the model. We can change the thickness and all other settings later as well. Once the strokes are added, press Ctrl tab and switch to object mode. Open the data properties panel. Here you can change the blend mode, opacity and other settings for the grease pencil object. In the strokes menu, we can change the thickness of all the strokes as well. Try changing the values to see how it affects the results. Let's go through some of different grease pencil tools which are available to use. Select the grease pencil object. Press Ctrl tab and this time switch to sculpt mode. Press F and move the mouse to make the brush size bigger. You can easily move, stretch, smooth the strokes using the sculpting tools. There is a thickness tool as well. Rest of the tools you can test yourself and see how they work. Switch to edit mode. You can click any point on the stroke or select the entire stroke as well. Turn on the stroke option from the top menu to select the entire stroke. Holding control will allow you to select multiple strokes. Switch to draw mode. In this mode you can erase, cut and perform editing related tasks. You can also select one point in the stroke and press L to select all the points. To optimize any stroke, you can use the simplify option from the stroke menu and use one of the three different tools available. I will use the sample one here. You can see our stroke is now more optimized and extra points have been removed. You can also select all points and press Alt S to change the stroke thickness. Now I am going to switch to draw mode. Make strokes over the round base at the bottom. Use a thin size brush and create the strokes. Please keep in mind for this tutorial I have only covered some of the basic features of grease pencils otherwise there are a lot of more tools and it is difficult to cover everything here. Now we will create our material shader and add lighting. 
Let's first switch to the shading tab. I will drag close the extra views on the left side so we have more space to set up the materials. If you like, you can change the default HDR map lighting and change the strength to 2 so we can see our shading adjustments easily. Select the top art. If it has any default material, it will show below in the shader editor. Otherwise, just simply create a new material. I will rename it to stylized shader yellow. We can also isolate the top part from the other objects so we can see our changes more easily. Starting with the base color, drag and add a mix color node. I will change the B color value to dark orange and slightly increase the factor value. Now from point A, drag and add a color ramp node. Change the linear type to constant. Click the plus to add a new color point in the color ramp. Drag the point slightly closer and start changing the color. For the rightmost point, I will use a dark orange color. For middle one, slightly bright orange. And for the leftmost one, dark red. We won't see any changes yet. These colors can be changed later on as needed. Next, from the color ramps factor point, drag and add a Veronite texture node. Attach the colored property to the factor. You can see some big shapes forming on the object. Change the type to 4D and the other one Euclidean to Minkowski. Slightly increase the scale value as well. Drag from the vector point and add a texture coordinate node. Check if the object property is connected to the vector of the Veronoi texture. Let's start changing some values. Try making the scale smaller in the Veronoi node. Change the colors in the color ramp and the mix node so there is more better blend of colors. Depending on the type of look you need, you can make the colors as needed. Let's move to the roughness property. If I reduce it to smaller value, you can see it forms a clear shine over the surface. We will break this clean roughness look to make it a bit more interesting. From the color point of the Veroni node, drag and add a color ramp node. Connect the color point to roughness. Bring the two black and white points closer to see the effect. You can change the color values to slightly light gray if it looks too shiny. Now you can see surface roughness is more broken and spread over the surface. Make sure to save your work. Next, from the normal property, drag and add a Veronai texture node with position point connected to it.
from the vector property add a linear light node from the a point add a geometry node with normal point connected to it from the b point add a noise texture node with color connected to it You can try changing some values in the nodes to see how they affect the overall result. With the noise texture selected, press Ctrl T to add a mapping and texture coordinate nodes. Connect the object property in the texture coordinate node to the vector of the mapping node. In the Veronoid texture node which we added at the start, slightly change the scale value. Change the type to 4D. And this is the overall node setup which we will be using. Exit the isolate mode so we can see the other parts. If this material is already assigned to any other part, we can simply make a copy of the material, click the number button to do this and rename it to something else. Start changing the values in the shader to make the look of the base object. I will be slightly speeding up this part of the video as it is mostly making small adjustments in the colors and values of the nodes. Create another duplicate copy of the material and apply it. Change the color and try some different values. Repeat the same process for the base plate as well. Next, we will add light to our scene. Switch to render view, press shift A and add a sunlight. Rotate it so the light is coming from the side. Increase the strength to 50 and change the color to slightly yellow orange. For some extra lighting, we will now add an HDR map. Go to world settings and add an environment texture map and load the HDR map. I have provided the link for it in the video description below but you can use any other HDR map. As soon as it loads you can see our scene has more additional light coming from it. I am now going to make small adjustments in the colors and light. In the render settings. Turn on ambient occlusion so we have more shadow detail in the corners of the object. Use a high value like 1.0 or more. Next in the shadow settings change the cascade size to 4096 so our shadows are high quality. In the color management change the look to high contrast so the results look more vibrant. If you like to give a different color to the grease pencil lines, then we can add one more material. With the grease pencil object selected, go to the material panel, click the plus button to add a new material. Change the color to red or any other. Go in edit mode, select the strokes that will have the different color. You can press L to select the entire stroke or use the stroke button from the top menu. 
While holding shift, you can select multiple lines. Click the assign button to apply the new material. Right click, make sure all objects are using smooth shade settings so the results are looking correct. For the background removal, I have shown the world node settings. You can copy it. Check my other crystal tutorials which shows the entire process. Before doing any rendering, in the output panel, in the data menu, turn on Z property to fix any overlapping grease pencil stroke. And from here you can continue making your changes. This is a procedural material, so it will work on most shapes. I hope you find this tutorial useful in some way. If you like to see more content in the future, then please make sure to subscribe, give this video a like, turn on notification bell. Thank you very much for viewing.